Stacy Seabrook. Um, that is the barn studio version of Mama and Papa Avery. Those of you who are wondering, anyway. Hello, hello, hello. Sorry, I can't see the chat while I put uh, Stacy's face up during the song, so. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. <clears throat> We're glad we get to spend a little bit of Christmas with you too, too Denise. Hello, Scotch, Andy. <laughs> so, since we're starting out on the uh, note of international support i have something else to show off here besides the you know santa cap obviously ho 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 but you see a shirt i have on right another gift sent to me by jerome in belgium so another another symbol of international support for me to wear uh on on my channel so that's kind of cool Thought I'd show that off a little bit. Thank you, Jerome. Also want to mention uh, thank you very much to Adrian Gonzalez. She's been very, very generous lately um, with, um, you know, Super Chat. Uh, so I wanted to give her a shout-out for that. Very, very uh, thankful for that Christmas time. And YouTube does give us this kind of cool platform to use where I can talk to you and we're able to create the Hangouts afterwards where we can all get together and talk after videos when we want to. And we're just not done talking about the subject yet. So 
uh, and that sort of thing. But so very generous. Thank you very much for that, Adrian. And, and um, you know, and, and to everybody. And, and of course, to all the wrecking crew, everybody who's digging into the documents and digging in on this case and, and getting educated. Awesome. Then that brings us to what we're here to talk about today, which is The Innocent Man. It's the new uh, Netflix documentary. And as I talk about The Innocent Man, I'm going to be talking a bit about some other cases that I follow here on my channel, which are uh, Scott Davis case um, and, you know, well, just some other cases here, basically, uh, mainly and also a lot of the wrongful convictions of youth. I've done about four videos about it. I'm going to be talking a lot today probably about the case of Devontae Sanford because the case of Devontae Sanford has so many, uh, quite a few parallels to what goes down in The Innocent Man. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. I figured it would be about the time everybody was waking up in the UK, you know, but Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. That's why I have my Santa cap on. You can't get mad at me when I have a Santa cap on, right? <laughs> Out of Oklahoma seems to be an issue, or at least that, well, that particular officer, is that detective that took on these two cases, I think it might have started with him. And there, there's like a problem in our law enforcement and I think this is what this case comes down to now that I think about it, really. So I'll put this out there right away. This case strikes me as a case where this retiring detective was getting frustrated because he had a serial type two, actually, serial type murders uh, on his hands. And he... He wanted to he wanted to solve them. He wanted to go out. He wanted to end his career kind of on a bang and not on a whimper. But I think the fact is is that these two these two killings were kind of serial where the they may not have the person may not have even known these girls. Um, at least that's the way it strikes me because none of the evidence fits. It has a lot of parallels to a lot of other things that we often talk about here on this channel. Um, uh, it has a lot of parallels even to the staircase with the way that the, the district attorney's office uh, acts. But that then again goes into what I'm talking about here where it started with that detective. And that detective does some things that he really shouldn't have done and got and set, set mo in motion certain things. Well, that then became like a snowball rolling downhill. And, and there's, a, uh, a, there's a, a phrase I like to use a lot, in for a penny, in for a pound. That's what it gets like with law enforcement to the DA to where these things end up going, basically, is that basically once, even though they may have screwed up and done some things wrong, it's it, it, it it's like they've done those things wrong. They don't want to fess up to those things. So they just they're they're already in it for a penny. So they just continue on. If they're in for a penny, they're in for a pound, which means that they're going to they're going to continue to exert whatever they need to to make their original premise go through essentially. So that is essentially, I think what happened with this case where everybody just started going with it. And then by the time they were starting to realize that they had gotten it wrong, they just didn't want to fess up to it. And it was just easier to let these two marginal individuals, poor individuals uh, didn't have a lot. Uh, police obviously had an issue with them and that's why the police went after them. Uh, any ringing any bells for anybody? Anybody, anybody remembering a similar, I swear I remember a similar situation to this where there's like law enforcement who didn't like the poor guys, uh, the guys who they felt were troublemakers and, and started pinning crimes on them. So, gosh, it's floating on my memory. So, I don't know, anyway, I'll remember. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so that's kind of what I'm thinking about, you know, when with this, with this innocent man and what, what went down, it's. I think that's why we see all the shadiness with with even going up to the prosecution on this and and that sort of thing. It's it, it looks to me like it got away from them 
and instead of owning up to it they decided to just cover their butt and 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 and, and nothing makes that any clearer um i don't know i'm sorry for those of you who haven't watched it yet but nothing makes that clear when they exhume the carter girl's body because they want to take a print off of a corpse that's been decaying for i think it was at least three years at that point i think it was i mean you're going to take a print off of a corpse that was decaying instead of going with the print that you took off the 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 hand when it was still freshly you know was still you know when she had only been dead like a day you think somehow uh a, a print from exhuming her is going to be better than that one and I, that that whole business right there it just shows you that they had something going wrong in their heads and they had something going wrong in their thing there was something there that stinks and i can't tell you exactly why other than it looks like they may have just realized they made mistakes early on but weren't willing to fess up to them but i could also i could also roll with the theory that maybe it is even more than that that maybe it is possibly even a little bit deeper than that uh, because that whole thing with the exhumation just wow dude when i was watching that i just went whoa and then the way that they they cut her mother out of it um after getting her permission and she made the agreement with them and then they ended up not honoring their agreement with her i mean it just shows all the shadiness going along here it just everything that they were doing just shows that they were hiding something that you know it's just not right it's just so not right so that's kind of like basically where i stand uh to start off and i know that adrian wanted to come in here and join the hangout if she's still here apparently she's got her santa cap on too i want to see hopefully she didn't fall asleep already <laughs> but anyways so i don't know how, how many so let's see is there anybody out here commenting about the innocent man let's see here oh yeah the mom they yeah oh my god dude that poor lady i i mean but she's come through it man she has come through it and she's I gotta say, she she is after everything she went through the severe you know bout with alcohol that that she you know ended up wallowing in for a long time and she's come out of the other side of that and she is uh, she just strikes me as just a very very intelligent and very reasonable person um, who's gotten control of her demons that obviously you know went rampant when when that pain of what the state did to her with that exhumation of her daughter that just i mean she was already in pain and that just sent her off the, over the deep end off the edge and you know but she's come through that and she's come out on the other side of it and she's i mean she strikes me as just a very very intelligent and reasonable person uh this day and age and um i really liked her uh and i just feel terrible for everything she had to endure but I am glad that she was able to talk to that the Mr. Williamson guy um, before he essentially drank himself to death. Um, but she got to talk to him, and they got to talk a bit, and and so she was able to make her peace with that, um, and and that sort of thing. And and so you can see she's gone through a healing process in this, and um, and my hats off to her. I mean, everybody knows here on my channel, I have just the utmost respect for the victim's families. And when dealing with wrongful convictions, I feel that that is really truly necessary. It's, I mean, honestly, I think if you, if you, if you don't find that necessary when you're talking about wrongful convictions, I think maybe there's might possibly be something broken in you to where you don't have maybe normal human compassion. Um, but she, I mean, she just strikes me as, you know, she realizes that she was screwed over by the state and the, the law enforcement there in the DA's office. And I don't know. I just, I look, it looks to me like she came out of the other end of it stronger than when she went in. And I just, my hat's off to her for that. Uh, let's see. Yes. Hold on. What hurt nine. 
Yeah, the part when she talked about she that they said it was either the belt or the cord from the electric blanket that had killed that they had, had been used to strangle her, and and the part where she goes and I had bought her both of those things. Ooh, man, uh, you know, just it it yeah, you know, you, you feel for her, you really do, you feel for her. I just man. And and but I do admire her. She's she's come out of the other side of it. She you know she 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 acknowledges her pain, but she has she no longer lets her pain, you know, kind of control her as she may have done in the past. So I that's what I kind of admire about her. She really she was to me, she was really amazing. I liked her. She was a really good part of that documentary. Yeah, I imagine, but I mean, then again, it's like the only, I mean, it's the only part of her she had. I mean, remember, she, I mean, they were talking about exhuming a body, Lori. They were talking about exhuming a body, and she was talking about one last kiss, one last hug. I mean, she had, she really has a very real kind of super uh, strong need for physical uh, touch with with the people that she loves. And and so I think maybe that belt is basically the, the closest that she has to to a piece of 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 you know her daughter. I, that's the way it strikes me anyway. Well, that's what I see with her. I mean, there's a mixture of pain there, but there's a she She's come out of the other end of it and she now understands what happened. She's she's got she's she's shed some of that bitterness and some of that anger to the point where she's she's able to talk about things without getting angry and and she talks about things very intelligently. I mean for for just a country girl the way she comes off for just a simple country girl I find her to be very very reasonable and intelligent. Um and you know, I, I liked her. I did, I really did, and I do feel for her. Feel for her as I do for all the victims' families in, in just about any case. Um even in you know, I mean in this in this case isn't like really all that, you know, special. I mean, it happens all the time. I mean, you look at the Scott Davis case in Georgia, you know, I have sympathy for the Coffin family, but I also have sympathy for the for the family of Scott Davis because I mean the the evidence there showing that leads away from Scott is rather significant and it was all ignored the one of the, the 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 person to whom this evidence points now lives in Australia and is trying to get all of my Scott Davis videos deactivated in Australia so that nobody in Australia can watch them why is that because well because they talk about her and the fact that she somehow knew that the victim had been shot in the head while he was burning in a house fire. How could she have known that unless she was there before the house fire and she was in there and saw him before the house fire that in turn makes her culpable. This was all ignored. So th there's cases all over the place like this. Um, Devonte Sanford, you know, <sighs> kind of a simple kid, not, not really kind of like Brendan. Uh, in a lot of ways, and this is in Michigan, and kind of like Brennan gets coerced by police officers because they can't figure out who committed this uh, quadruple homicide, and it turns out that there was three other quadruple, quadruple hom or two other quadruple homicides that had been committed in the, the, about the same two or three day period. But anyways, they get Devontae Sanford for this set of four of them at this one like uh, apartment complex, and they get they convict him. Seven days after he's convicted, the hitman that actually did it comes forward, spills the beans completely, gives them the entire story uh, of those four that they had gotten Devante Sanford for, and then also an additional eight homicides, two, uh, two other quadruple homicides, and for a total of 12. And he admits to all of it, leads them to the gun that matches the ballistics of all the scenes. It all ties together and comes back to this hitman, all... I mean, you can't deny it. It's perfectly 
it's it's like oh yeah this is what happened okay what happens kim worthy one of the bad ones one of the bad district attorneys and i want to make i'm going to make a point of saying that in this in this uh live as well they're not all bad okay and if you watch my video on my channel about james Farron and the pink gun mystery you'll see that i am fully willing to recognize a good da when they, when i see one but this this kim worthy was one of the bad ones she ignored everything coming from this hitman if hitman even gave an affidavit saying that Devonte sanford had nothing to do with it never had anything to do with it blah 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 blah, blah on and on and on she didn't care she just got the hitman for the other eight which she hadn't been able to prosecute anybody for and left Devonte sanford in now had she corrected it seven days in think about how much it how much it would have cost the state of michigan at that point to to compensate Devonte Sanford for maybe the time leading up to trial and then the seven days that he was in after he was convicted. Imagine how much smaller the settlement would have been had it been dealt with honestly and 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 like, oh yeah, oh wait, we got this kid, but oh, here's the guy. He's we got all this evidence. It proves it's him. We're gonna let this kid out. Sorry, kid. Instead of taking that attitude and doing it quickly, no, Devonte Sanford ended up waiting, having to wait about 15 years and ended up settling for just under a half a million dollars with the state of Michigan. And I guarantee you the state of Michigan doesn't have an extra half a million dollars to be thrown around right now, uh, especially when you had the guy who actually did it and the proof was all there and it lined up perfectly and you just ignore it and end up costing your state a half a million dollars. I, if, I mean, personally, I would think that the, Mich the Michigan, the residents of Michigan, um, would would look at miss worthy as um a thorn in their side uh you know a problem um you know i don't know but anyway that's that's you know what i'm talking about anyway so i mean this this type of stuff the the police as much as we all want to believe that these good people are always good people and that and as much as we want to trust that these people could do no wrong we can't be that naive. We really can't. And and nothing and and to really for me nothing proves that more than AEDPA. The way we all allowed that to happen. I mean that right there was us being scared and reacting scared and and sacrificing liberties to feel some marginal I don't know, measure of safety, but in reality, we got, we, we are no safer. And all we did was give away more rights and liberties. That's what we do. That's what happens when we, when we react scared, when we, when we, when we, when we are scared, we, we are not at our best. And that's how AEDPA was formed and, and that's how it was born. And, and, and so it's, it's something that we all have to be mindful of constant vigilance that we have to make sure we don't allow fear to to corral us into giving away more of our rights, um, you know. Because seriously, it, AEDPA is seriously the only reason why Brendan Dassey is still in prison. Thank you, Denise, for putting up my other channel. I am trying to build that channel up and get it to the point where it's uh, able to like monetize and do all that stuff so that YouTube's you algorithms will help to share, you know, and all that stuff. And so I'm trying to get that channel up to where I can post there as well. So thank you for posting that, Denise. But so what I'm and the reason why I'm trying to do this is that way I don't have to post so soon. If I post a video on this channel and it's doing well and everything, instead of posting another video that might you know, curb, you know, people from finding that video and going to the new video, I can maybe leave a video up for a day or two so that it gets more views. And then if I need to, I can post, you know, on the next day, but I can post it on the other channel. So I'm, um, I'm thinking about possibly having a combination effect on the channel. So we are trying to build up the other channel and get it to the point where it's, you know, somewhat on par with, with MAM here. And then I might end up using it. So just so people know where the plan is going forth on that, just just an, just so you have an idea of where we're headed. Yeah, it's shocking what happened to Devonte Sanford. I left the uh, the link to the Devonte Sanford uh, to the video I did about it. I left a link to it down below. You can go check it out when you're done here. And um, 
yeah, it's shocking what, what Miss Worthy did. You know, Miss Worthy, the Ken Kratzes, um, the, the Jim Hardens, um, the Petersons, like the guy in The Innocent Man here, that, that guy Peterson. I mean, those are the bad ones. Those are the ones we, we don't want. And we as citizens have to pay attention. It's not enough to think that some magical act that, that, that's going to be passed in Congress is going to make all of our problems go away. No, it's not. It never is. It's going to be us getting involved, staying involved, using our voting power, using everything, you know, using our ability to communicate with those people who we vote into power and, and, and making those people aware of what, what the will of the people is. Um, if, if they, if they have a feeling like nobody cares, then they'll do whatever they want. Right. So when it comes down to it, ultimately it does come down to us and our own responsibility. We, the people for the people by the people. That's important. That's an important part. I mean, it's, it, it sounds great at the beginning of the constitution, the first two things, but, but by the people, that means that we actually have to be taking part. And we have to actually be forming our democracy and we need to be maintaining it and not just expecting that it's going to just magically go along and, and, and be perfectly fair and, and just and, and never need any kind of maintenance. No, that's just that's a childish look at the world. That's never going to be. So anyway, <laughs> sorry, I'll get off my soapbox about that now. AEDPA just bugs me. Got to fight and never give up rights. I know that's what I'm talking about, you know. There can be corruption and everything. I think that most police officers, I believe that most, most, I think, district attorneys are, are for the most part good guys. I really do. But there's a small percentage. Um, and sometimes they get, like, they get um, a foothold somewhere and they are just, they're able to do some things and they're able to bully other people. Sometimes it's, it's, it's a weird situation, but it happens in, in situations where extreme authority is given like it is within, um, you know, the ranks of a police department and stuff like that. It, it's just, sometimes people are just afraid to rock the boat and things just go without question because of that reason. And as long as that, and, and so what I'm saying is, is that sometimes when you get a few bad apples in certain places, suddenly you have an entire arm of, you know, or a, an entire limb, uh, basically the law enforcement in that particular area where this, you know, um, cell of bad apples operates, ends up tainting the entire force in that area, that type of thing. So it's, it's, it's up to us to pay attention. It's up to us to, to, you know, probably it's been easy in the past to just, you know, whatever we see come from the prosecution or the DA's office that we just automatically go, oh, yeah, must be true. Well, maybe now we're a little bit less naive. Maybe now we're we're paying attention a little bit more and, and maybe looking to read between the lines on what we're hearing from DA's offices now, especially after what we've learned from the press, the Kratz press conference um, and those sorts of things. I mean hopefully the as as time goes by here things like making a murder things like the innocent man things like the confession tapes on netflix um things you know just things like even the even the keepers which i recommend highly to people um just things like this are going to continue to get people aware that power power is something to watch it just because just because somebody you think you can trust somebody in power doesn't mean you can't pay attention. You still have to watch out because any agent is human and, and all humans are subject to human frailty. That includes police officers, judges, lawyers, prosecutors, uh, anybody. We're all subject to human frailty. That's just the way it is. And so, yeah, I mean, it's just, we, it's 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 like I said. It's it, it takes constant vigilance. It's it's we the people for the people by the people. And I mean, it's important to remember that it's by the people. That's it's up to us to use our power as as the you know the greater voice, the masses, 
and to make the change and form the democracy we that we live in that's you know that's that's the way to do it and um i don't know you know so on smaller levels you know like i said well here let me look at the comments a little bit uh, Central Park Five is a very good uh, in, um, example of how five different kids could come up with a very similar story somehow, uh, and yet end up being completely innocent because the DNA proved it was somebody else. And that's the thing about a lot of these wrongful convictions. A lot of the same seams run through them. Um, you know, when you look at the confessions of Tommy, Tommy Ward, and uh, what's it? Um, uh, Kurt Fontenot, I think, is it Kurt? Kurt, anyway, Mr. Fontenot. Their 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 confessions were virtually exactly the same. They described the same type of shirt that she wasn't wearing. I mean, it's like all these things, and 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 so these confessions are completely ridiculous, sounding familiar, you know. And it's like, and the thing is, is that that shirt was the one corroborating thing that they had, but then it comes out in post conviction when they find out that. There was actually a stack of reports this high. You know, basically there was a stack of reports this high, but all the prosecution had handed over was a stack like this, right? So once they got into those reports, they find they they find out that, oh, well, they knew that somebody had given her a blouse that looked like that in a, in a report that was in August before all this, you know, basically happened or whatever, right? So they already were looking for that. So that's probably how that thought got planted into the both of these you know into tommy ward and mr fontenot's heads was the fact that the police department was feeding it to him and you can see kind of proof of that the way that they all look by the time they're recording the the confessions these two guys look like they've been coached they look like the, every time they're prodded they immediately start speaking about something else for at length you know just like you know it's i mean <laughs> it's just crazy <coughs> <clears throat> Carl Fonten Fontenot, yes, sorry. EDPA needs, needs to use in the way it was designed for. Well, I mean, whatever, the, the Supreme Court in, in the way that they interpreted uh, AEDPA stripped us, stripped us of our habeas rights uh, completely to the point of even Brendan's case can't even break through. You know, I mean, it's when you th when you look at it that way, that's the reality of it, and that's how scary it is. That not even a case like Brendan's could break through that has international uh, weight, you know, on it. People, people, you know, watching it and 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 everything. I mean, it's just the 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 amount of support behind Brendan and everything. The amount of support behind Brendan and everything is just crazy, you know, so. See here, I'm just looking for anybody that actually watched. I know, stupid, annoying little thing. Tommy is still in prison. He's. Um, they are filing. Uh, currently filing post conviction. Um, you know, a, a petition for him. And I mean, dude, that that <laughs> that confession is so ridiculously wrong. It's not even funny. And 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 the fact is, is you know, what's it? Tommy Ward was saying. Oh, I just thought it was a dream. That's because he was just trying to figure out some way to try to say what they wanted, but make it, but in a, to put it in a way that disqualifies it. 
because he he didn't he knew that he they were not going to let him walk out of there with anything less than what they expected. <laughs> with anything less than what they expected. So it's, you know, I don't know. That's the way it all comes off to me because Tommy seems like he got really just railroaded uh, in this. I don't think he, I don't think he was involved. Um, yeah, it just, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. The John Grisham book. Yeah. Interesting. Um, uh, that's I haven't I haven't actually read the John Grisham book, so that I I don't know about, but I did, you know, it was just to me looking at what was going on with this case and and what was going on with you know in the case and and you see what you see what happened with uh what's his name, Mr. Williamson. Uh tragic as it is, I mean, guy gets out and drinks himself to death within five years because why? Because oh well obviously when he gets out yeah, he technically got out, but I'll bet you when he got back to his community, they all still thought he was 100% guilty. I'll bet you they made his life a living hell, and he ended up turning to alcohol and probably drank himself to death. And I mean, he managed to drink himself to death in five years, uh, but he also probably had some some mental issues that that needed addressing. But you know, unfortunately. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he had every reason to be pissed. Of course, yeah. Uh, what case are we watching now? We've not had a chance to watch man to watch man of your cozies. Oh, many of okay. Uh, I've been saving them to watch later though. <laughs> Hi, Jamie Hart. Tonight we're talking about the Innocent Man on Netflix, new documentary on Netflix that a lot of people are starting to talk about. So that's what we're talking about tonight. Yeah, so I mean, you know, there's things like, um, you know, the, it's like I said about the exhumation, that right there, just like, what the hell, how are, how are you going to use a print from a decaying body, and 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 say that that's better than a print from the the same body at the time when the body had not had any chance to decay yet? I mean, how, I did that to me is just mind boggling. What was the what game? was that police department and and the da's office playing with that i mean that's just and then you have that other the other lady i forget her name in this the blonde lady who um was actually part of everything and then eventually one day remembered oh yeah i remember that he was with me he was at a party i was at or whatever right and he was trying she was trying to tell uh peterson i believe it was and peterson ended up like walking away from her just like acting like she hadn't spoken. And when she ended up testifying, he like cornered her out in the hallway and was telling her, Oh, you're, you're not leaving. You're going to be testifying some more or whatever. Cause like he was going to grill her or whatever. I mean, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was just, you know, crazy to me, dude, that, that, that Peterson guy is not, not one of the good ones. He's certainly not one of the good ones. The way he talked about, all the discovery was right there in his office in an, in an unlocked file cabinet. So the defense was free to come and go through it at any time. Like you don't just make copies of that and send it over. They're not asking you to look for what's culpable, dude. You just make copies of all the stuff about this case and send it over and let them dig through it. No, you don't need to do their work for them. When I, when I heard that guy saying that, I was just going like, I was just getting like a migraine just going, Oh my God, dude, why is there always gotta be, dumb idiot like this guy in every wrongful conviction and there is there's always some idiot like this guy uh you know that makes your head hurt and you know the jailhouse snitches things you know where it was a female snitch and then it comes out she was talking about she felt pressured into to giving the the account or whatever because of these intimidating like little sex capades that the the guards would plan where they would take her aside and like all the guards would like have turns you know or whatever it was like this really weird sex thing going on and like so these women were intimidated and so she felt the need to make that statement and testify the way they wanted because she was afraid of them i mean that whole business it's like oh what the hell's going on here you know it's like and 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 hearing something like that makes you wonder what in the heck were, were the da's office in this in the, this police department trying to hide by not pursuing the 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 leads that actually were strong 
and that might have led to the person who did this, and we're ignoring those and going after guys like Tommy and and and, and Carl Fontenot. But a guy who asked for his execution asked for his execution day, and the judge ordered all testing and found him to be innocent. Not sure what it was called. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, Susan. <laughs> Steam snitch for both cases. Yeah. One thing I'm watching is that the little Christmas tree behind you. <laughs> I'm thinking it's got the lo the longest uh, spaced out blinking lights ever. Waiting for it to blink. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it doesn't have any lights on it, unfortunately. Maybe if I do something tomorrow, I'll have some lights wrapped around it by tomorrow. So. Yeah. So, and and like I said, this case, you know, it it bears, you know, parallels. A lot of a lot of. A lot of the case documents not handed over. Hmm. Well, the you know, and 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 exculpatory stuff. Um, I mean, you guys probably haven't heard me talk a whole lot about the Scott Davis case, but the Scott Davis case, <laughs> they they chose not to press charges in '96 because they really didn't feel like the evidence was there, right? And probably because they realized that. It was actually a woman who had done this, the one who had the knowledge that the victim had been shot in the head while the house was still burning. They probably realized it was probably that person and <laughs> whose name was Megan. And so they probably realized this. And, 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 and so they let it all go. But then later on, the victim's family was kind of pushing on this, and the victim's family is very powerful, very powerful and very wealthy. And they were they were pushing this, and they were offering rewards. And suddenly, the one named Megan, who I was just talking about, suddenly comes forward saying she has the evidence that Scott did it or whatever, when it's pretty obvious to me she's actually the one who was involved here or knows what happened. Um, and she's coming forth saying it was Scott and all this stuff. And, and yeah, it's so bizarre. And then as soon as it's all said and done, the, tr the, the trial's over, she skips off to Australia, and that's where she lives to this day, and spends and spends her time getting my videos, where I talk about this. She spends her time getting them deactivated in Australia. So, I mean, it's that's to me so many things about this person that that indicate guilt to me, and you know, yet Scott Davis sits in prison. And I would also say this, because I know a lot of my Scott Davis and my wrongful conviction of youth videos don't really get a lot of attention. I know not. I know a lot of you guys come in here and you really just want the making a murderer news. You want the making a murderer, making a murderer. But I hope that some of you will start to expand your opening, you know, the opening of your mind a bit to realize that this is a criminal justice issue that's happening all the time. And, and hopefully some of you will start to tune into some of my other cases and share those on Twitter or on Facebook or on somewhere. Um, you know, I, I really wish my wrongful conviction of youth series videos would get more than, you know, four or 500 views. I wish they would get over a thousand views like the, like the other ones do um, within a week or so. But I mean, I just know that the interest in 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 the, in the stuff that's not making a murder isn't, isn't strong for, for a lot of people, but I would, I would at least make the impassioned plea for people to try to make the effort because the these these are cases that I branched into because the, the criminal justice issues aren't just with the Avery case. There's other cases out there. And, you know, like I said, Scott Davis is one of them because eventually eight years later after the Coffin family was, was pushing, they come after Scott again. They take him to trial. They've lost 50 pieces of the evidence. Okay, it started out as 72, but then they scrambled and managed to come up with 22 pieces of the evidence. So they had lost 50 pieces of the evidence when they finally took Scott to trial on this, on complete circumstantial evidence all the way, ignoring the fact that 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 Megan had the guilty knowledge, ignoring that, and they go forward, 
Uh, among the 50 missing pieces is blood they believe to be the killers that didn't match Scott's. So his defense attorneys were not able to test that and get their own experts to, to give any kind of an opinion about that. Uh, fingerprints of the suspected killers, uh, basically, gone. Never entered into the, um, what's it called, the Fredericks thing or whatever, basically. Uh, oh, APHIS, they call it. Sorry, APHIS. Never entered into that. Um, so And then they were lost. So they're gone forever. Um, numerous other pieces of evidence. Just, it's a ridiculous, uh, ridiculous mess. Um, it's just a mess. And and yet, and they were able to float this conviction over the over the net. Um, the jury was out for literally till the eleventh hour. They were out to till the eleventh hour, and and you know, so they clearly had some issues with the case that they were not fully convinced or whatever, but eventually came back, you know, and they, they went against Scott. It's, it's amazing to me, uh, personally, um, especially when you know that the person who actually knew the victim was shot in the head while the house was still burning, nothing ever happened to them. They were never even investigated. So you see these common threads that run through every wrongful conviction all these wrongful convictions they have all of these very common seams that run through them it's you know it's important for all of us to realize at this point and take a notice of and 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 realize it's not just in one case um but i know we're all busy and and the thought of 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 having to dig into more cases than just avery and dassey uh seems like oh my god it makes your brain want to like overload and frizz out and smoke come out of your ears right but but it's kind of necessary for us to at least start to gain a peripheral kind of awareness of what's going on in cases all around us and see where the mistakes are getting made how common the mistakes are and started to have a knowledge in our own mind um, and an awareness in our own mind of how common it is and how and how it's a fixable problem but we are going to have to exert our force as we the people we are going to have to exert our force, uh, and 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 that's what makes democracy great. That's what makes this country great. That's the truly great thing about it uh, is that the people are truly the ones in charge when they learn how to harness and focus their power. I do talk about staircase and I also like to talk about OJ. I do enjoy talking about OJ at time to time. Um, Ricky Hochstetler. Uh, I'm going to be, Oh, when I'm talking with uh, Ripper on the, on the, the day after Christmas, when I'm talking with him, we're going to be talking a little bit about Joni Goodwin. Uh, some of you may know about that. I've done a couple videos about Joni Goodwin. Uh, recently there were some very interesting developments in her case. Um, and so there's going to be, you know they're going to be finally bringing somebody to trial on that and 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 so that's going to be kind of exciting but johnny sorry ripper and i will be talking about that uh on the 26th a bit in addition to his his videos about the burning of the llama and then the the colburn call video uh where the cars here call so we'll be talking about that on the 26th and and so you know Amongst that, we'll also be talking about Joni Goodwin, so some of you guys can get introduced to that and, and know a little bit of what but that's about. Um, but yeah, I, I just I do I do you know encourage and implore everybody to I know I know I know it's hard to want to take an interest in other cases, but please, if if I'm here making it easy for you in a little video that you can watch without having to go and dig into the documents the way I did to make the video for you, you know. Take a minute to sit down and look at it and make sure that you're getting educated about the kind of BS that's going on in the country and, and in our in our you know district attorney's offices and 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 the things that are happening. And so that way you have some awareness of it. And that way you know whether or not you're on board with it or whether or not you think it's complete crap. And and therefore you can have an opinion about it. And you know, that's our, you know, so I would just ask that everybody bear, you know, bear that in mind. It's for me, this channel's about Stephen and Brendan, yes. Um, that's where it started. But just like the attorneys say, it's really about the criminal justice issues here. And, and that's the way I've become to look at it as well. It's all about the criminal justice here that needs to get 
changed or it needs to be augmented or 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 uh, amended or whatever it's we the people have to get interested and 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 create the change we want to see that's just the way i see it so uh let's see uh knew about those don't know your case was boring. Oh, I really missed homework. Uh, will they be on this channel or on new channels? When you mean they, let me see. Jamie Hart, when you mean they, do you mean like when I do my wrongful conviction of youth? Um, uh, and Scott Davis and all that sort of stuff. Those are on my main channel here. You can find them. If you go to my channel's main page and go to the search this channel thing and type in like Scott Davis, you'll see about probably about 12, 15 videos pop up uh, that I've done about Scott Davis. If you go in there and type in Ricky Hochstetler, you'll see two videos that pop up. Uh, if you type in, if you type in Joni Goodwin, you'll probably see two different videos that pop up. Um, OJ, there's going to be, there would be about probably two or three videos that would pop up if you typed in OJ to that field. But yeah, there's other cases that I kind of go over. Uh, if you typed in Devontae Sanford, you wouldn't get anything because the video is called The Innocence Deniers, but I've left the Devante, the link to the Devontae Sanford video down below. My Wrongful Conviction of Youth series, you'll know, you'll know when you see it because it'll say Wrongful Conviction of Youth series, pretty much the first thing. Uh, and those, well, you guys remember recently the Daniel um, uh, Daniel Villegas, uh, when you saw him break down in court when he was finally exonerated. That was part of my Wrongful Conviction of Youth series. But even that one that people really liked and responded really, really well to, that, that video is still kind of under, under a thousand views. It's, I mean, even that powerful of a video and, and so that's why I'm encouraging people to at least please try to take an interest in those in those videos that aren't making a murderer. At least try. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Hello, Sydney. Karen from Sydney. Let's see. Game of Thrones is pretty awesome. Uh, I can prefer you just did not know if you had to go to a different channel. I'm trying to build up my other channel, though, right now. And, and I hope that in the near future that I will be posting on two separate channels. The, the, I don't know. Let me try to explain why this is. When you, when you post something on YouTube, obviously, when you first post it, it's getting a lot of awareness because it's the main video on your channel at that point. It's the one that's getting showcased on your channel. So when people come to your channel, they see it that way. Or it's also because it's new, it's getting shared by people and whatever and that type of thing, right? So, so and, and YouTube's algorithm, because it's your latest video, you, you, YouTube's algorithm kind of helps to try to share and suggest it to other people as well. So what I'm trying to do is get the other channel going so that, say, on day two, if instead of instead of posting another video and kind of cutting off the momentum of that video that may have been doing pretty well, I can then maybe post another video over on the other channel and then have it using YouTube's algorithms and everything, whatever. Hopefully it will do as well. But then that way I'm not having to step on videos so quickly. It's basically where I'm trying to open it up a little bit where I don't have to step on my videos so quickly. I don't know. Hopefully that makes sense. But anyway. <sighs> Absolutely, Jamie. If you want to help us dig on the Scott Davis case, I'm sure... I don't know if Susan Lee Sexton is still here, my my lovely resident artist, uh, along with Spicy uh, Melody. But 
uh, me and Susan, we've we've been digging into the Scott Davis case for a long time, and uh, so we'd we'd love to have a, a couple more people there helping us look into stuff. Um, I know Susan's trying to look into a lot of phone record stuff with Megan right now and stuff, so you might be able to help her with that. And uh, yeah, so definitely we'd love to help. That's the one. That's the one case. That case I care about it a lot, but I'm underhanded because um, I just don't have enough people interested in it. Uh, let's see here. So I obviously am eager to see what's going to be coming down the line with the innocent man. Um, I mean, it's pretty obvious to me that Tommy Ward is pretty, pretty much just innocent. Um, uh, Carl Fontenot just seems ridiculous to me. How's the cup? That's, uh, that's, that's the one I'm drinking from. It's good. If I wasn't wearing a Santa cap, if I wasn't wearing a Santa cap, I could probably be wearing this guy here. See? But, you know, I already got my Santa cap here, so. Eggnog and whiskey. I do have, I do have some, I do have some, uh, coconut flavored Caribbean rum here. So I actually don't have the eggnog though. I would need that. So remember people, if you're watching this and, and you want to help me out, please go over to the, to my other channel there. You know, my other channel that I'm trying to kind of build up here. Uh, please subscribe to it, like a couple videos, you know, just it all helps, you know, please do. Uh, the more attention I can draw to it, maybe even share a couple of the videos from there. Um, mainly right now, it's a bunch of funny videos that me and Paul, me and Mr. Capaldi kind of make to kind of razz each other and, and mess around, uh, mainly to blow off steam sometimes because sometimes the case you get kind of to the point where it's like you know rawr. anyway when i get to those points usually that's when i start goofing around and and talking about captain crunch with mr capaldi and and having mock arguments with him and, and that sort of thing so that's a lot of what's going on over at that channel but if we can get it kind of built up to where um it's kind of i can get certain features of it unlocked there that i have unlocked here on 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 this channel then i will try to like i said do the posting where it staggers between the channels that way uh each all these videos can have the the greatest chance of reaching the most people as possible um that's what i mean you know that's what i'm always thinking about is how to reach more people how to reach more people so if you guys can help me out with that it's much appreciated so uh there you go she just left you a link for it so thank you thank you so much thank you denise you're right on top of it Um, oh, you know what else I love though on Netflix is Mind Hunter, dude. That show was awesome, where it's like showing the the FBI agents that were very first kind of like figuring out the 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 whole idea of profiling to be able to track down uh, certain like serial killers or non non motive type killers kind of thing or whatever. So, um, yeah, Mind Hunter, man, that's a really good one. <laughs> did you know jamie Rao? Well, okay uh evil genius was sick yeah that's like yeah mine hunter uh season two i know right i've been waiting for a season two of mine hunter to come out because oh season one was really good yeah uh let's see it must be season two yeah true detective i don't know if i've watched that one Edmund Kemper. <laughs> Let's see. No, I will wear the Army one. My family is all mixed. Air Force, Army, Marines, and Navy. <laughs> so, anybody else that's watched the, uh, the Innocent Man that has any questions about that?
Let me scroll up and see if there's anything else up here. Yeah, the innocent man's interesting. I mean, it takes a minute to get going, but by the time you get to the, it's only six episodes. Fortunately, it really doesn't take that long. In that sense, it's not. It doesn't take as long as to do making a murderer or anything like that. But it's um, by the time you get to like episode, the end of episode three, and getting into four, five, and six, it's all it's 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 done building you up, and there is kind of some build up to this because you got two different you know, murders, two different crime scenes, two different sets of, you know, wrongfully convicted individuals. And, and so there's a certain amount of buildup to it, but by the time you're getting into four five and six on it, it's, they're starting to let you know a lot of the stuff that's been going on, a lot of what's going on in the current post conviction process for Tommy Ward. And you start getting more of what was in that, um, file and, and all those evidence reports that weren't handed over by the prosecution so you start getting the, you start finding out what more was there and how many other suspects there were that had they had stronger leads on that they were they ignored and that raises questions and it's 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 very interesting so it's it's definitely worth your time Did anyone else think the the Glenn Gore was definitely a likely suspect? Uh, I think I think he is, and and certainly was proved because DNA tied him to the rape. Right, it was his semen. Right. Uh, much respect, Karen. My son is currently. In... Were the cops using them as confidential informants, or were the cops on drugs themselves? And this this Dave, those guys passes as to not. Be exposed themselves. Uh, I'm not sure. Let's see, I like the childhood friend uh, that was trying to help out the reporter. Yeah, I did. That guy was kind of interesting. You know, he just knew. He knew. You know, he knew Tommy and Carl were like. You know, that they liked to drink, and and you know they were generally up to no good. But he just kind of knew they weren't murderers, right? He was like, you know, he just his his. That's what his gut told him, and so I kind of respected that. <laughs> yeah so it was i mean it's an interesting show i do suggest it it's uh like i said i mean it's just when you watch it there's the things about the confession where it basically looks like the the confessions were fed that's how these two guys who didn't do this have basically the same story and and like i said the one thing that was supposed to corroborate the stories was supposed to be this blouse but you, that's not corroborative when you find out she was wearing a blouse that was no, nothing like what they described. So then we find out that the police had knowledge that somebody had given her a blouse like that, and that was the blouse they were describing. Oh, we know what happened here. We know exactly what happened here. And 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 it just sickens me that that the states aren't aren't willing to correct their mistakes, you know, quicker before they become expensive. And then want to complain about how it's it's how could everybody want to go against the state and blah 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 blah. It's because you're obviously don't have enough responsibility to go and take care of these things in a proper and timely fashion that we all have to find about it later. And it has to be a big and embarrassing egg on the face moment for everybody because you guys didn't want to own your stuff. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's the problem here. It's like it's things like Kim Worth, Kim Worthy, piss me off. You know how much did that how much did that woman cost the state of Michigan? A whole lot. A whole lot. The fact that where Tommy says that they dumped her, right? And it's and it's funny because Tommy says, I figured that would be one of the things that would end up setting me free because I just told them I just told them somewhere uh where 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 you know, it was just some place. And he's like, I didn't think the body was there. I didn't know where the body was. He goes, I just told them a place. I figured when they went there and checked that they would be like, oh, okay, well, this isn't it. Bobby must, or, you know, Tommy must have lied or, you know, whatever. And that that would be, 
you know, whatever. And then they ended up finding that the body was actually 30 miles away, 30 miles away from where Tommy said. And it's just like, it, it, it's just like, you're just sitting there going, it's like I said, folks, it takes constant vigilance. We all have to be interested in, in paying attention. And, and, you know, we have to, we, we just have to, it, it's up to the people to start taking an interest and, and 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 making sure that this stuff doesn't continue because for the people that are in power or the people that are in these positions it's easier for them to just cover their butt and roll with it um it's it's it, it they have you know it's not in their blood to want to own their mistakes and and admit fault in anything and and that's the unfortunate truth of it Right. People don't want to speak out because they rely on the ones in the system to watch their backs. Uh, Tommy messed up the third friend's name too in the video confession. Uh, yeah, and all of that. Well, no, the one that was supposedly doing all the raping and everything, right? That guy? Yeah. Turns out he actually had a broken arm that night. <laughs> I mean, it's like... <laughs> it was just so bizarre. So freaking bizarre, dude. And he's... The whole case was falling apart from the word "go," and and they went for they went with it and went for it anyway. I you know don't know what to say. It's absolutely just shameful. All right. Well, I think I've kept everybody up late enough. I think everybody's getting tired. Little tit. Yeah, right. Yes, yeah, something like that. It was something something tit. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Shows me 35 likes, actually. Shows me 42 watching with 35 likes. But yes, please do make friends with the like button, everybody. That helps the video get shared more. <laughs> Hi, Spicy. <laughs> so, yes, once again, a reminder, please go over and like and like my other channel, uh, subscribe to it trying to get the numbers up there to where I can get it to the point where I can potentially monetize there. And then I can start posting, you know, some videos there, as I said, so that way I can stagger them. That way these videos have the best chance of being able to reach the most uh, people as possible. Um, so hopefully you guys can help me out with that. I know you guys, you know, those of you who are here are generally part of the core crew. Um, we just need to hopefully, you know, we get, on the making a murderer videos, we get generally a thousand views within two days, uh, almost every time. So hopefully we can get a lot of those people to jump over to the other channel and just like, and subscribe and, and that sort of thing so that we can get, once we can get that channel to where I can unlock certain things with it that I have here on this channel. Um, I can then use the channels in, in, you know, conjunction with each other. And that way, like I said, I won't be having to step on a video that's doing really well. Uh, to post a new video. I can then go ahead and put that video on the other channel, post it on Twitter and on Facebook and on, you know, wherever else and in, in, in Google Hangouts for everybody and all that stuff so that that way it gets spread around um, and, 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 that, and that sort of thing. But like I said, it's it's unfortunate sometimes when I, I'm, I'm wanting to put out new content because everybody wants to see something new, but I'm kind of not wanting to step on something that's already going and it's going pretty well. It's getting a lot of views. It kind of so it kind of makes me want to sometimes not have to post because I don't want to screw up with how well a video is doing. So I'm hoping to alleviate that problem by getting the other channel going. So I hope you guys all understand where I'm going with that. Hope you guys can all help with that. And thank you very much for it. Adrian Hulk smashed the like button. I love it. I love it. I love it. Deadpool smashed it. <laughs> I love Deadpool too. Deadpool is so funny. Oh my God. Thank you, Denise. That's the link to my other channel, folks. Please go over there, like, like some videos, um, go in the comments and 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 say 
Mr. Capaldi is a havering Scotsman. Um, yeah, do all that stuff. And then subscribe. And, yeah, anyways. Bushy mustache. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. So let's go ahead and put up a little Stacy Seabrook. And, um, oops. All right, you guys ready for Stacy? All right, here we go. Let me go ahead and click this over here. Everything 
a path that can't get in stranger and stranger. All we know, they will sacrifice your kid. Oh, Brendan Dassey, that's exactly what they did. March 1st, alone in a room with Bert and Ernie. No parent present and no attorney. Four hours later, with a touch of the knee, they finally get Brendan to agree. There's something going on. I said there's something going on. Oh, they will sacrifice your kid. Take Brendan Dassey. That's exactly what they did. There's something going on. I said freedom is in danger when the agents of the state can take the children from the major. All oh, they will sacrifice your kid. Take Brendan Dassey. That's exactly what they did. Take Brendan Dassey. Oh, that's exactly what they did. Let me tell you about a story. Now we better talk about about the law enforcement. A right bunch of clowns. How they wear their badge like a plastic crown. How they stick into a story of which they are now bound. It's a rabbit hole they don't want you to go down. I go through Wisconsin. They're doubling down. See, they framed them once. Then they did it again. They did not count on filmmakers making that mayhem. They thought their lives were safe. All went by the ruse. They did not figure on 19 million views. It'll make you shake your head and prop the ground. But over in Wisconsin, they're doubling down. I said they'll double down. And they'll triple down. They're headed down a road which they cannot turn around. They walk around like they'll be home free. Because they control all the evidence on the local judges and found is the state's AG. But I got some news. It's as plain as day. It doesn't matter what the state or the guilty say. Because we got Kathleen. She's got them in their sights. She's a real life hero turning wrongs to right. No matter how hard that state's devil pounds. Over in Wisconsin, they're coming down. I said, no matter how hard that state's devil pounds. Their house of cards is it coming down. It'll make you shake your head and drop the ground. I said, over in Wisconsin, they're coming down. Over in Wisconsin, they're coming down. And very Merry Christmas to those of you who stuck around and listened to all of Stacey Seabrook. And uh, Merry Christmas to all of you. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. And um, hey, who knows? You might see me at some point tomorrow, but it'll probably be later in the day because I know all you're going to be running around with kids opening presents and family stuff. So it might be later in the day because I got family stuff in the morning too. But anyways, so if you haven't already, please hit subscribe and we'll see you.